Many diverse groups have lived and settled in Utah, including African Americans who first explored the Great Basin in the 1800s. African American Utahns faced severe discrimination throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, but despite the opposition they faced, they made Utah their home by working, establishing religious communities, all while working toward equal rights. Some of the first African Americans to travel through Utah arrived in the 1820s looking for animal furs to trade. Their names were James P. Beckworth and Jacob Dodson. As Americans moved west during the 1840s and 1850s, a national debate escalated concerning the expansion of slavery into the territories. Pro-slavery and anti-slavery groups understood that the extension of slavery into the West would shift the delicate balance of power in Congress between northern and southern states. These debates played out in Utah as well. Some of the members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints owned slaves, and enslaved African Americans were among the first Mormons to arrive in the Salt Lake Valley. As Utah's early leaders applied for statehood in 1850, they also navigated the larger national debate about slavery in the West. Utah first applies for statehood in 1849, and the application gets caught up in the Compromise of 1850. Uh, nationally, uh, Congress is concerned about the balance between slaveholding states and free states. And Southerners are adamant that the nation not add additional free states to lose the balance of power in Congress. So Utah's territorial delegate is a man by the name of John Bernheisel. He's the one that is representing Utah's application to the United States Congress. And he will send letters to Brigham Young, who's the leader of the Latter-day Saints who are in the Salt Lake Valley, uh, telling him that uh, it must be evident that uh, the Latter-day Saints are not practicing slavery, so that if they have a chance at all for statehood, Northerners would reject their application if they believe that slavery existed in the territory. The irony is that slavery does exist in the territory. Uh, three African-American men are in the Vanguard Company. They arrive in the Salt Lake Valley in July, of 1847, July 22nd, in fact, two days before Brigham Young. Harkley, Greenflake, and Oscar Crosby are three enslaved men sent to the Salt Lake Valley by their enslavers to prepare a home and a place for their white families uh, once they arrive the next year. So they are vanguard pioneers into uh, the Salt Lake Valley, and slavery exists in Salt Lake when the first Euro-American settlers arrived then in, uh, on July 22, 1847. Some of the uh, slaves who are taken to Utah will then uh, go to California with Latter-day Saint colonization of San Bernardino in Southern California. And the census that is taken in 1850 uh, includes uh, a variety of enslaved people in the census, but the notation is uh, on the way to California, trying to indicate that, yeah, uh, those who are enslaved are actually headed to California. Some of them are, but not all of them. Uh, so slavery continues to exist, uh, but the census tries to portray that uh, there really isn't slavery here so that it doesn't uh, thwart Utah's application for statehood. But nonetheless, there are uh, those who have converted to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from the American South, white enslavers who then bring their black enslaved with them to the Great Basin. Uh, and some of those black enslaved are also baptized members of the LDS faith. So you have white enslavers enslaving fellow members of their own faith, and that exists in Utah Territory uh, almost from the beginning. So it's a part of the Utah story and a part of Utah history. It really has an impact on the struggle for statehood only in that 1850 application simply because of the desire in Congress to maintain a balance of power between free and slave states. And Utah is not admitted as a state in that 1850 application because of the Compromise of 1850. The United States abolished slavery in 1865 with the passage of the 13th Amendment. African American Utahns were no longer enslaved, but that did not mean they were considered equal. As Utahns worked to achieve statehood in the 1890s, there were roughly 600 African Americans living, working, and serving in the military in Utah. 
And although Utah's 1896 state constitution gave African Americans the right to vote, black Utahns face many of the same racial injustices in Utah as they did elsewhere. You have African Americans who are working in the railroad industry, serving as porters. You have uh, the development of African American communities in Ogden, which is a hub of the railroad, and a vibrant African American community there. Uh, so in, in all kinds of ways, uh, you know, they are a part of the fabric of Utah, and Utah statehood would mean an ability to engage in the national political process. Uh, not that they didn't face discrimination, because they certainly did. And Utah, like the rest of the nation, especially after the Supreme Court puts its stamp of approval in 1896, the same year that Utah gets statehood, the Supreme Court of the United States legalizes separate but equal, or segregation. And Utah will start to adopt segregationist rules. Utah never adopts segregated schools simply because uh, the African American community is too small and there is no real way of segregating uh, education in Utah. But a variety of public accommodations are segregated as a result. So uh, hotels, swimming pools, theaters, dance halls, all of those things will become segregated as a result of uh, the Supreme Court's uh, Plessy versus Ferguson decision. And Utah, like uh, states elsewhere, will adopt segregation. So it's really a mixed bag, uh, I think, for African Americans in the state. Uh, obviously, we have evidence that some are participating in the political process, but it doesn't mean that they are accepted as equal in Utah society, because they certainly are not. Many African Americans have called Utah their home. It really isn't that surprising that Utah shared in the larger national struggle to overcome slavery and its legacies of racial inequality. What is surprising is that this history hasn't been widely known or celebrated. African Americans have been a part of Utah's shared history since the first fur traders arrived here. Learning about their experiences and listening to their voices helps us to gain a better understanding of Utah's past, present, and future.